It's California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Jackie Robinson. She is the vice mayor of the city of Pasadena. Such a beautiful city, ethnically diverse. I don't mean to be Pollyanna, but it seems like there's a lot of ethnic harmony in Pasadena, in the Los Angeles area generally. And then we juxtapose that to what's happening in Missouri right now, in Ferguson, Missouri. And I want to get a sense from you as a leader in Pasadena, as an African-American woman, what's your sense of the crisis in Ferguson? Well, I think what we're seeing in Ferguson is something that we're seeing, you know, throughout communities, especially communities of color in the United States. And, you know, we've had our own share of challenges in Pasadena as well, but I think it's just um, a symbol of the frustration and the anger that communities of color um, pertaining to Ferguson, especially black communities of color are experiencing across the United States in the strained relationships that have happened as of recent with um, police departments. But what's interesting, and again, I don't mean to be Pollyanna, but maybe I am. I mean, I think about Pasadena. I mean, they've elected you. You're an African-American woman. Uh, Chris Holden, uh, a former colleague of yours, an African-American man, represents Pasadena in the state assembly and other areas and his district, very low African-American population. And so, you know, am I Pollyanna? A am I really seeing this through rose-colored glasses that here in California, you know, we're, we're so much better than what's happening in, in Ferguson? Well, I think in, in, you know, in Pasadena and California in general, we do tend to be more progressive than oh. other parts of the United States. And we have had to made some major strides, but I think that, you know, we have to remember just because, you know, there's an African-American on the council or in the right. state assembly, you know, as Attorney General Holder right. demonstrated and talked about his own personal story as a black right. man growing up in the United States, your title doesn't shadow, sh shield you from the realities of racism in America. And, you know, whether you're the Attorney General or at, at the time of his story, a, a federal prosecutor um, or a city council member, we all have our experiences of experiencing racism in our cities. In our what about this whole notion of driving while black? I mean, that's... I mean, it's very real. It's very real. And if you look at the statistics in Ferguson, but elsewhere as well, you know, you can see that there is an inequality in looking at the statistics and seeing the high numbers of black residents, you know, residents of color that are stopped by the police versus, you know, white residents and other constituents. And so, you know, we have to take those things seriously and look at them and see them for what they are. The, the numbers don't lie at the end of the day. What's interesting is that in California and throughout the nation, it's hard to deny that demographically, the Latino population is growing much quicker than the African-American population. The African-American population seems to be stable. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of attention seems to be focused upon Latino enfranchisement, whereas it just seems as if the African-American experience hasn't received as much no notice until Ferguson. I mean, I think it has. And I think when you look again, look at the statistics, we can't just go by the numbers. You see the inequalities when, you know, the number of arrests for black men and Latino men and just Mm -hmm. men of color and communities of color in general exceed what the populations are right. in probably any jurisdiction that you can think of. And so even I, Los Angeles, even, even Los Pasadena. Angeles, e, e, you know, I don't know the numbers for Pasadena off our head, but I, I would tend to think that it, it shadows. It's the same in right. Pasadena as well. So is Ferguson a turning point or is it a melting point? Well, I certainly hope that it's a turning point. Again, you know, the the civil disobedience that's going on in Ferguson right now mm -hmm. and the frustrations, I think that's just uh, an external um, show that, you know, people are fed up and they're sick and tired of being sick and tired and they want some tangible outcome, not just justice for Mike Brown, but, you know, the many Mike Browns that have existed right. across the United States. What about this whole issue of enfranchisement? And, and part of that right. enfranchisement is, you know, those communities going out to vote in for us, not just for these federal elections, but, right. you know, their local elections. In Ferguson, we've seen they have a lot of frustrations with their own local e elected I mean, mayor I, and city I council saw, members. And like, so that's something tangible that they can do on their own that you don't have to wait for federal intervention. The, the last election, I guess, African-American turnout in Ferguson was 5%. That's, I mean, that's that's the reported number. It's just But, you know, again, if we look at statistics, that's not too far behind probably any other city. I mean, just we had just had the Los Angeles mayor's election. Right. I think turnout was somewhere around 
maybe 15 percent. For African-American voters? Well, no, oh, just general, in general, oh, well, the that, general yes, voting course, population yeah. is low, 15 right. to 20 percent. And so when you look at communities of color, it's lower than that tends to be. And so, again, you know, we have to change that throughout the United, right. United States, not just Ferguson. It's all about a conversation, and it's one that we're having. And you are making it your mission to have lots of conversations with people of a whole host of nationalities, ethnicities, and I have to say I'm kind of proud that I know you because you have done remarkably well in terms of creating those conversations. You are part of a U.S.-Japan leadership program. You're part of a U.S.-Italy leadership program. You may be traveling to the Middle East, uh, assuming that there's uh, safety in that region. Talk to us about these programs and the conversations you've been having. How mm -hmm. exciting. Well, since I've become a member of the City Council, I always tell people that my experience has been very fulfilling, very unique, and I've had an opportunity to participate in a number of programs that I likely wouldn't have had of an course. opportunity to participate in had I not been on the City Council. And so I've made it my mission to, you know, see the world outside of Pasadena, outside right. of California. And, you know, as we've seen from what's going on in the Middle East and elsewhere, our world is bigger than just where we live. And Clearly. those issues do impact us because we have constituents that are from other countries. And, you know, and what's going right. on in other countries affects them being here and their family members. And so uh, I just returned from the U.S.-Japan Leadership Program. It's a two-week fellowship put on by the U.S.-Japan Foundation. And I was honored to be uh, nominated, in fact, by uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu How and nice. selected. And so I was one of 20 U.S. delegates to the convention. There were also 20 Japan uh, young leaders there as and well. And we'll travel to Japan next summer. Right. So this summer, the Japanese delegates came to the United States, yes. Seattle specifically. Next summer, you're going to Japan. Yes. So what did you learn? I mean, I assume that the J Japanese delegates, they were also younger elected officials. Is that right? Not just elected officials, but young leaders from every sector. Got it. This year's program happened to be heavy on U.S. State Department, mm. uh, military um, officials, and uh, business participants right. from Japan. But really, it's just all about developing relationships with the idea that, you know, if we begin form forming these partnerships and friendships now, you know, who, who knows, one day I might be a state senator, a right. U.S. senator, a congressperson, and them or equally. President. Or president. <laughs> <laughs> and them equally, they'll be leaders in their own country, right. and we'll have these early experiences to drop on and to learn about each other's culture and communities and issues um, from a national st nationality st standpoint. It's interesting, you know, the U.S. has been so Eurocentric, and now we're looking west mm -hmm. uh, to Asia. But still, we need to look east towards Europe. They're still an important partner, and you're doing that as well. Tell us about the U.S.-Italy program. Well, uh, the U.S. Italy program is the Young Leaders Conference as well, and that's put on annually by right. the U.S. Council on the United States and Italy. And it's a similar program, developing relationships among leaders in both countries. And I'll be tra traveling to Italy this October with them and learning from my counterparts about what are the, some of the challenges and successes that they've been facing in their communities. So this year, it will take place in the city of Matera. Which is near, do you know? It's in southern Italy. It's hard to deny that Italy has not really had a tough time. I mean, you think about their economy, it has just been hammered. And you think about their political culture. I mean, we may have a little corruption here in California. It's, I mean, Italy is just, it just seems rampant. I mean. Well, I, absolutely, there's been some successes and challenges in Italy <laughs> as well. And I can't say, you know, I've, I've never been there before, so this will be a new experience mm -hmm. for me. So I'm looking forward to learning from them right. um, what they see as their, their successes and their challenges. And I think they're looking forward to learning from us as well. And I'll have an opportunity to conduct one of the workshops. Um, about? Um, I'm going to do it about leadership and, and really? youth leadership in the United States. So um, it's basically an op open forum, and they have a theme every year. So this year's theme is technology and the impact that technology is having on businesses and municipalities and um, other organizations. So. Congratulations. Very Thank proud, you. if I may say. Her name Thank is Jackie you. Robinson. She is the vice mayor of the city of Pasadena. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's California Edition.